more than a thousand Australians have been included in the Queen's birthday honours list today. The list honours those who've contributed to the community over many years. The officer of the order is among the honours bestowed and Professor Anne Toomey is one of the worthy recipients for her contribution to the law and public education on constitutional matters. Professor Anne Toomey joins me live now. We've spoken to you many times on this program, Professor, but none quite about this. So congratulations today. How do you feel? Thank you. Oh, look, I have to say I was quite surprised and really rather pleased. It's just a nice thing when somebody says thank you for all the stuff that you've done. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's pleasant. It's nice. I mean, I think you move well beyond academic circles in, in, in terms of your fame, if you like, when we saw Section 44 of the Constitution almost reported day in, day out. Gosh, it was years ago now. Feels, feels like so much has happened since then. Were you happy to see Australians become acquainted with the intricate sections of the Constitution? Well, yes, I mean, it, it's somewhat ironic, but it was a really good teaching moment. Um, it was a moment to, you know, explain to the public about bits of the Constitution and why they're important. And we've seen that through the whole Section 44 debacle, and we've seen it more recently with COVID and um, Section 92 of the Constitution about crossing state borders and all those sorts of things. So every time we have one of these crises of some kind and we seem to have them on a fairly regular basis mm. it's an opportunity for the people to become more aware of the constitution and their system of government and why the rules are important so from my point of view i think that's great it's a, it's a way of communicating to the people and helping them to understand the system of government under which they live would you classify yourself as a constitutional conservative or do you think the constitution very in a very limited way needs to be changed from time to time um, I think it does need to be changed. It certainly needs to be updated from time to time. I think that's really important. In fact, I'm actually the director of a, um, a body called the Constitutional Reform Unit. So reform is really important. Um, uh, am I um, a constitutional conservative? Yes, in a different way. So the way that I'm conservative is that I want to make sure that if you change the Constitution, you do it well. You do it in a, you know very clear, um, precise way. You don't muck it up. So um, I'm not out there for making willy-nilly changes, <laughs> okay. uh, but I am out there for making changes that are well considered and properly thought through. Okay, so no willy-nilly changes. I think this last 18 months with COVID has really brought the Constitution, Federation reform back into the spotlight. Would you like to see changes around the power that states have, particularly when it comes to the movement of the population? Um, look, I think that um, uh, the, the Constitution um, has shown in very recent times that federalism is important. That's another thing that we've learnt from COVID, how important the states have been, um, particularly in terms of, um, you know, protecting the people of the state from the spread of COVID. Um, but also in making sure that things are done. You know, even the vaccine rollout, for example, if we'd left that totally to the Commonwealth, would that have been a good idea? Not necessarily. It's good to have a number of layers of government. So, no, I don't think it necessarily means we need to change the system. I think what has happened recently has shown us actually the benefits of having a system with, you know, a number of layers of government where if one isn't working well enough, another can step in and fill that gap. And I think, again, as in terms of teaching moments, I think that COVID has taught us quite a lot about the fact that federalism is not just that frustrating thing. It can actually be beneficial for people. What's one thing you would change about the Constitution, if you could? Hmm. I think if I was going to make some kind of a meta change, one of the things I'd change is about the way it's changed. Um, so I think that's one of the big flaws in the Constitution is that the only way you can get it changed is if the Commonwealth Parliament and the Commonwealth Government um, agrees to put that change forward. And that means that all changes effectively that are put forward are changes that are for the benefit of those who hold power nationally at the Commonwealth level. And that's not necessarily the sorts of changes that the people would always want. Sometimes the people might want a change that restricts Commonwealth power, Indeed. for example. So just, so to, just to, jump up in that there, good. to change the Constitution in any way requires a referendum, doesn't it? It does. Um, right. so but you're ultimately... saying the government of the day gets to choose the question of the referendum that is then put to the people? 
Exactly. So the people never get to vote on things unless the Commonwealth Government agrees to put it to them to begin with. And I think that's where the fatal flaw is in the entire arrangement. If you're going to have a federal system and you want the people to decide, you've got to have some way that the people can contribute to getting the issue to the to the referendum to begin with. Well, Anne Toomey, how would you do that? Would you have to have a vote to vote on the issue and then a vote on the issue itself? It's all sounding a bit complicated. Yeah, it can be a bit. Um, so they do this quite a bit in the United States, not at the federal level, but at the state level. So sometimes they hold elected constitutional conventions that have the ability to hear from the people and to decide mm. whether something is appropriate to put to a referendum. Um, and sometimes they actually have elections to decide about whether or not to even have a constitutional convention. So the people might decide, hey, we don't want to look at this. You know, we think the constitution is fine, go away, you don't need one. Mm. So it's just giving the people a little bit more of a choice as to what's in their constitution, because ultimately the constitution has to serve the people uh, and it has to serve the people of the time. And there's a real risk if you freeze something so that it's the same as it was in the 1890s, that it's not necessarily going to be the, the type of constitution that fits into your society today. People do need to have some level of control over the laws mm. that suit Indeed. their time. Indeed. Well, just one final question. What do you see as the next referendum being put to the Australian people? Indigenous recognition in the constitution, and perhaps this is an apt question on the Queen's uh, birthday, whether we do move away from the monarchy? Well, look, I think both of them have strong movements behind them. So um, in relation to all referendums, to have any hope of getting up, uh, you need to have some degree of grassroots support. Um, so both of those propositions, Indigenous constitutional recognition and a republic, have strong grassroots support in different sectors of the community. Uh, but then there's this real difficulty of being able to marshal the political support yeah. um, so that it meets the ground, grassroots support and you've got the leadership to get it up and running into some sort of viable um, constitutional outcome. And, and both of them still need a bit of work before they're going to get put to a referendum. Well, here's a very random one for you. Have you seen Hamilton and did you like it? <laughs> I have seen it. I thought I would hate it because I'm not really a person into rap and actually I did really enjoy it. Um, it was very clever. It told a really interesting story. Um, I'm afraid, however, our constitutional history doesn't have as many duels and yeah. um, moments of excitement, <laughs> although there was the odd duel, you know. Um, I think, you know, a Premier shot through the hat of the um, Surveyor General at one stage and there was a duel in, oh, well, an attempted duel in South Australia um, between people fighting over constitutional matters. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> one of them sent the police out to arrest the other. And having said that, then he later became Premier, so obviously it wasn't a big deal. Um, but still, probably not quite enough for a musical. No. Well, it doesn't sound like it, but it sounds like there's a bit of juicy history here in Australia as well. And to me, congratulations. Thanks so much Thank for your you. time.